Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I want to talk about how to design a space shuttle and to that end I have to decide whether to do it in career mode or sandbox mode and really career mode right now where we are it really doesn't allow for the kind of space shuttle uh, testing that I would like and also the designs we didn't have the right parts uh, we would have to go for a very small mini shuttle and so I decided that it'd be best to just do it in sandbox for now. Uh, that took me a little bit of time to decide and also I wanted to decide what I needed to cover in this episode because there's a lot to discuss when it comes to space shuttles. So uh, I've decided obviously not to go with a conventional space shuttle. Obviously the program now has very conventional cockpits and uh, cargo bays and all that but everybody does that so we're going to see how to create a shell stack based on an arbitrary shuttle and this is as close to arbitrary as I decided to get and so we've got a nice big wingspan and uh, this is critical uh, this is a fuel hauler shuttle but while it can have a full tank on the shuttle stack it cannot re-enter like that you can see its center of mass is very far forward now in theory we, we, this is ballast this is uh, fuel meant for balance reasons. In theory, we could uh, send it back over here. So during the mission, we could uh, try to rebalance by shifting this fuel back. But as you can see, it doesn't do the full job. So that's not sufficient. It'll have to be empty when it comes down. And of course, that's the purpose. Its purpose is to deliver this fuel to a space station and then return. And then when it comes back down, it will have, let me see, have we got everything right here? Uh, it's close. Anyway, uh, it'll probably have lost some of its RCS fuel by then. Uh, it cannot use these engines while in space. They're not, they're not pointed right. They are simply launch engines, and we'll see that in a bit. Uh, this is the engine that uses in space. Like the Space Shuttle, which has orbital maneuvering engines that use its RCS fuel, uh, the, this shuttle uses the RCS fuel in order to maneuver in space and also return. So once in the atmosphere, it's just going to have to glide in like the space shuttle does. Uh, it also needs to be empty because otherwise there's no way it has enough wing area in order to glide even if it's dropping like a brick. Okay, but uh, we're not going to be bringing it down. We want to see how it operates when it has the full fuel tank. We're not going to do the whole station transfer thing. We're going to see how to build a shuttle stack. And in order to do that, I think we should take a look at the real space shuttle. I happen to have an install with the space shuttle in there with lots and lots of mods to make it as realistic as possible. So let's turn to that install and I'll discuss how the space shuttle works. Okay, so here we are, the space shuttle. And this is an install with a real solar system, realism overhaul. This has Earth, this has Fermi Space Deadly Reentry all the works and so this is a very difficult install to get to put together at the best of times especially with the space shuttle in now this so is the CSS space shuttle I think it's a component space shuttle it's called and obviously I'm using the boosters from that mod and the shuttle but I'm using my own external tank because I I wanted to have it balanced properly and also I've uh, dubbed this uh, CSS shuttle max because it's carrying a large amount of fuel, uh, extra, probably a little bit more than what the space shuttle actually carries, and that is for margin for my purposes in, uh, well, for stuff I'm planning, basically. But anyway, it's a little bit heavier than the regular space shuttle uh, uh, external tank, basically. Anyway, but otherwise it's balanced pretty well. Uh, this is uh, MechJeb, and it basically, for, for my uh, usage, it just provides the same functions as uh, Kerbal Engineer. And what you'll notice here is this stage here is the stage while these boosters are firing and then this stage here is the rest with the sp Space Shuttle's main engines going on their own. And it takes a lot of Delta V to get her, uh, into orbit around Earth as you can see. It actually takes about 9,500. The remainder is just maneuvering in space and returning. Uh, the thing is and the problem with that we're going to have is twofold. There are twofold, uh, two issues. Uh, one is that the real space shuttle's boosters 
actually decrease in thrust as they go up. Actually, they initially increase until a certain altitude, and then past a certain altitude, they start going down in thrust. That helps because as we go up, this side is going to get lighter uh, in relation to the space shuttle, and the space shuttle is going to be relatively heavier. So we want less and less thrust on this side and more and more relative thrust on the space shuttle side. So that's the first thing that we're going to have trouble with because our engines aren't going to be uh, automatically reducing in thrust the way the space shuttle's main boosters do. The second problem that we're going to have, probably more drastic, is the fact that the space shuttle main engines, I'm going to close this Delta V stuff for now, the space shuttle main engines are these, these are the Rocketdyne RS-25s, and one thing you'll notice about them is, the, oh boy, didn't want to do that. Okay, the space shuttle main engines, you'll notice, have a yaw gimbal of 8.5 and pitch gimbal of 10.5, okay, and so this is the gimbal range. Our engines in KSP, our normal engines, only have a, a yaw angle and pitch angle of about one degree. Uh, there are a few engines that have more than that, but I think basically we got one degree to work with. That is a huge problem. Okay, and you'll notice that the space shuttle main engines are angled like this. And in order to understand why, let's see the center mass and center of lift. Uh, not center of lift, uh, center of thrust. Okay, center of thrust is here. And you can see it's not quite under the center of mass. And that is because, well, we've got this this shuttle over here and it has to be able to balance itself and so the sh uh, center of thrust is just a little bit uh, tilted it is a little bit rotated okay now what happens these are very heavy boosters they are each 569 tons what happens when they do go away okay now the the center mass is here but actually the space shuttle will have emptied part of this tank Actually, it'll have emptied all of this. That goes. And so now the center mass is very high. And that's because the oxygen is very, very dense. The external tank of the space uh, shuttle is specially configured because it has that high density oxygen on top and then the low density hydrogen on bottom in order to make sure that the center mass stays high so that this thrust vector can point directly through it. If you can extend a line from this thrust vector at the angle that it's at, you'll see it goes straight through the, the center mass up top. And that's going to vary as the tanks empty. You know, let's say these are empty. Okay, so it's going to go higher or lower depending on how these things empty. And the key is that the gimbling of the engines keeps that thrust vector pointed directly at that center of mass okay now so that's another problem that we have with the uh, with the tanks that we're using in Kerbal Space Program the oxidizer isn't that much more dense than the actually it isn't more dense at all than the than the fuel than the liquid fuel so we can't really play the same trick that they have done here in order to keep the center mass up the best we can do is have some sort of empty tank at the bottom or have fuel flow in such a way as to make sure that the center mass stays high. That's the best we can do. But even if we do that, we do not have the gimbal range on the engines that would suffice to keep the shuttle balanced. The net result is that we are not going to be able to create a NASA-style space shuttle in Kerbal Space Program without custom parts. We, are, we can only have... Well, I, I won't say only. The, the thing to do is to create a Buran style space shuttle and the Buran style space shuttle is one that has engines on the external tank actually what we're gonna do is have a mix of Buran and the uh, and the uh, NASA space shuttle in that we're gonna have engines on the space shuttle as well as engines on the on the external tank so it's actually a mix of the two the Buran didn't have huge engines on the shuttle itself so uh, so it is a sort of mix between the two systems. So in short, we have three problems to deal with that, uh, that, were, that were critical design features of the space shuttle that we can't do in the default Kerbal Space Program. Feature number one, the saw rocket boosters uh, reduce in thrust over time. 
Uh, feature number two, gimbling on the space shuttle's main engines. Feature number three, uh, an external tank that has a very heavy fuel on top, well, uh, the oxidizer on top, which is extremely heavy and dense, and a very low density uh, fuel, hydrogen, on the bottom, thus helping out the balance. Okay, now there are many, many ways of solving these problems, and I'm just going to introduce one. Okay, another thing to note is the relative power of the space shuttle main engines. There are three engines here, and their thrust is, uh, the max thrust is 2,000, let's say. Uh, let's just call it 2,000 for, for calculation purposes. The maximum thrust on these is going to be, let me see if it says it here. Okay, so here it says uh, 14,781. On the ground, it's more like 12,000. Okay, but basically, the space shuttle main engines provide no more than 20% of the thrust at liftoff. Okay, so if you're going to build a space shuttle, you're going to want 80% of your thrust to be on this side of the stack. And that's minimum. Yeah, you can go more than 80%, but that's a good round number. It's more like 84, I think. But if you've got more than 20% of your liftoff thrust on the shuttle and you're making a shuttle that looks something like this, then you've probably got it wrong. So uh, that's a good benchmark because we don't want to keep crashing when we start building our space shuttles. We don't want to have them constantly tilting the wrong way. Uh, we need some sort of benchmark to go by. Anyway, uh, how about I try and launch this thing and we'll see how it works. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this, we, we want to take a look at the thrust on the SRBs, but in general, I want to first take a look at how things are lit and uh, start out. What you'll notice uh, is that I have my launch clamps on this external tank set relatively low, and as we lift off, the shuttle stack, the, the whole thing will start moving in this direction a bit. The real shuttle does this as well. Um, this is completely normal and it's just how it works. Uh, when it's going very slow it tends towards this side until its speed picks up. And that is why you have to put those launch clamps very low because otherwise um, well, we're going to have a little bit of a scraping problem. So anyway, you'll see that. We light the liquid engines on the space shuttle first. And then launch. So just a slight tendency towards that side, you will see. Now I need to pitch up a little bit. I want to pull up a little bit to make sure that our thrust vector is proper. You can see it tends toward the pitch down side and we want it to be pointing completely vertically. It's not doing that right now. And we want to do that before we start any further maneuvers. We need to do a roll maneuver in order to get our shuttle uh, properly aligned with the launch azimuth, which is, uh, we'll, we'll just go for 90 degrees in this point, but for the space station it'd be like 45. The, obviously a computer controls all of this, I'm controlling it by hand and that's a little bit tricky and I'm going a little bit slow on it. Really the space shuttle would have pitched down by now to about 80 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna begin the pitch maneuver now. Let's get a better view of things. I'm not doing this particularly well while talking. Now as the space shuttle, well let's uh, take a look at the thrust going. You can see that the thrust on the SRB is going down as we speak. So the whole 14,000 thing is a bit deceptive. It doesn't actually get to that. Now we're past uh, Mach 1. At this point, the shuttle main engines do throttle back in order to relieve stress as it passes maximum dynamic pressure. The special, special main engines do not fully throttle. They throttle from 68 to 109 percent. Well, 100 percent, 109 is only for special cases.
by now the space shuttle would have been on a much lower pitch than I've got it. I'm sort of wrangling with it right now. Now in the VAB, the the stage time for the SRBs read about a minute and a half. That's not true. Because they tail off in thrust, they actually have two minutes and three seconds on them. And even this stage time here that we have down there is not correct. Now I want to be about 35. I didn't do a particularly good launch, by the way, just for the record. Um, I want to be at about 35 degrees for the SRB separation. So here we see it's at 5,000 kilonewtons, 4,000. Separation occurs at 400. So the SRBs are still going when we separate them. But it's just a safe enough thrust. Okay, we're below. Let me set. Uh, hold on, let's get a good angle on this. You can see that they are actually clear of the wings. I made sure of that. Yeah, uh, from the angle that we were at, uh, it seemed like they were going to collide with the wings. That's not true. They actually go out so that it's it's safe. Anyway, now is the, this, this is the part where you're going to have trouble. Uh, if you try and do this in stock KSP, or at least with the stock parts, the probability that you can get this balanced right here is zero. Uh, I, I don't think it's possible. I'd like to see it if you can try. Now, in order to facilitate my own balance, I'm going to pump this liquid oxygen up. Again, we want the heavy fuel as high as possible in order to maintain the balance of the craft. One thing you'll also notice that we didn't get much speed with the SRBs. Most of the journey to space, to orbit, is on the space shuttle main engine with this external tank. As I've said, the space shuttle main engines are tilted on the space shuttle's body. They are tilted about 10 degrees, so they've got 10 degrees worth of gimbling, and they are also tilted 10 degrees, so they basically go from 0 to 20. So they they can go from absolutely flat with the space shuttle to about 20 degrees tilted up. It is not possible to use them once the external tank is gone these engines are not used at all. Uh, they would be far too powerful and they would tend to rotate the space shuttle around because uh, even though I say it can get to zero degrees directly in line with the shuttle not really not they're not meant to at, at all so so the the fuel for what we do in orbit is all in these little pods and they use the the OMS engines which if we come close that's the OMS engine and the OMS engines are really really tiny really really weak and they take a long time to do anything but that's fine that's fine because um, they are very very reliable and that's what you want and I have to emphasize uh, Earth yes this is Earth uh, that's Florida this is Cuba uh, Bahamas right a little bit fuzzy because in order to fit everything into the RAM space I can't have particularly high textures here okay at this point the space shuttle throttles back And that's because uh, it is the point where most of the mass is at in the space shuttle itself. Uh, this is mostly an empty tank now. And also we are getting close to our apoapsis. So, and the space shuttle main engines do not relight. They don't restart. So you're going to have to, uh, I mean, obviously, if you want to fly the space shuttle, you're going to have to get it right. Uh, you can't uh, shut down coast to apoapsis and then relight there. Okay, so you can see our time to apoapsis is getting uh, going up. We want to tilt down a little bit to limit that and give ourselves time to burn out the, uh, the fuel. And of course we should be tilting anywhere to negative 10 because the, the engines are tilted 10 degrees. So we can go all the way down to negative 10, and why don't we just do that? 
And again, minimum thrust on these is about 68% of their total thrust, so we're still going at about mainsail kind of thrust on each one of them. Oh, maybe you'll also notice the specific impulse of the Space Shuttle main engines are way above that of any engine in the Kerbal Space Program. But that's alright, Kerbin is very small. Okay, approaching orbit, and again, I can't relight these, so I have to shut them down at the right time. Okay. Well, anyway, our external tank will definitely re-enter. It'll have... we have a negative. I hope it re-enters over something that isn't land. But we cannot relight our engine main engines now. We will release the external tank, which probably has a little bit of fuel left. I, I think it does, but not useful to us. And off it goes. And... And we use our RCS and OMS to pull ourselves away from it. Okay, so RCS doing its job. Let's light the OMS engines. Okay, but we don't need to actually use them right now. RCS off now. We, now we are coasting to apoapsis. And in this case, we will use the OMS engine to complete our orbit. Okay, here we go. We're about to get to our desired orbit of about 340 by 340 here. Okay, that's good enough. I'm gonna be using this to do re-entry testing because as of yet I have not brought the space shuttle back down safely. So that is a different story. Anyway, that is how the space shuttle gets to orbit. Now what can we do about that in regular Kerbal Space Program with the regular parts? I do have the little mods, but nothing game-changing, remember. So we need to make sure that we can do the basic stuff so that we can get our own orbiters into orbit. All right, so let's jump back to that. So we're back in my regular install for this series, and I've uh, loaded up the file here in the VAB. What you need to do when you do that, uh, because it was in the SPH first, is press shift and then click and then that will get into the correct orientation. I'm going to blatantly assume that you have got an aircraft that you want as a shuttle and you know it can fly. I actually don't know whether this thing can fly. I just put it together and I just wanted something that could carry uh, a full load of fuel and let's let's load it up with fuel now. Okay now we've got a full load of fuel there and I just wanted a, something that could carry that up we need to retract the landing gear of course you'll notice here that I've put the landing gear actually on these struts instead of the wings these modular girder segments XL and that is for stability when landing okay so that's a trick if uh, if we attach first of all of course we would have to extend them down quite a bit in order to get them to have the proper reach and then also we need to make sure that they remain stable during landing instead of flexing with the wings. Now, uh, we've got three skippers in the back here, and you might think that that's overpowered. And, and you know, if we were thinking normally, it would be. And uh, we can see that if we put the skippers here now. I, I had the OMS engines first. We need them down. But uh, let's say we, we uh, gave the skippers some fuel. We have this reserve tank here for balance, but let's activate that. You can see thrust to weight ratio 3.31. Uh, That's huge. Well, it's not that huge if it has to counterbalance the external tank. Now again, we're going to have engines on the external tank because there's no way the one degree of gimbling on the skippers is going to be enough to keep things balanced. But, uh, but we'll get to that. Okay, now also I have tilted them much more than the 10 degrees that the shuttle engines are tilted. And actually, I'm gonna change that. I'm I'm only gonna have the top one tilted that much. I want these two to be a little bit more moderate. Uh, let, let's have them. I wish I knew exactly where 10 degrees was, but let's have them like that. And I'm gonna shift them in as well to remove that gap. 
Now, this is just on a whim here. I'm not saying that uh, there was anything wrong with having them tilted more, but I want some variety. And what's going to happen is I'm going to want to action group this engine and these engines separately. And then I can turn this engine off and on if I need to in order to help my balance. Okay, uh, action groups have got to become essential during this. Alright, so anyway, we have a an aircraft and we have overpowered engines on its tail, but compared to the shuttle, it's not that much. Um, if you take a look here, uh, let's get the, this back on again. Okay, this is as much thrust as one of the shuttle's engines. Uh, our mass, however, is almost, well, it's actually more than half the shuttles. The shuttle at maximum, even with a full payload bay, is uh, less than 100 tons, maybe around 100, th 100 tons. So we're 60% uh, of the shuttle's maximum mass, and uh, we've got only 30% or so of its thrust. So we're underpowered compared to the shuttle. We just have a whole lot of, I mean, it, that gives you an idea how much engine power you really need. Um, I, you know what, uh, it's helpful to have that on just to see the number here. Now, like I said, we want about 20% of the thrust here and our, the, the rest of the stack has to have 80% of the thrust. So we're talking about four times this. So what we're aiming for is about 8,000 kilonewtons on this side and, uh, and that will work out. That's my, uh, first estimate. Okay, uh. We'll refine that as we go along. One thing we can do is if we find that the balance has some issue, we can thrust limit here. But let's start out with the, a sufficient amount of thrust on the stack and then turn these down rather than having to add more thrust to the stack side. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Okay. Now, as I said, one thing you noticed, may have noticed about the space shuttle is it's pretty low on the external tank. And again, that is because of the center mass needing to be high. And so we're going to basically do the same thing. We're going to use the 3.75 meter parts. And I'm going to, this is going to be the lowest tank. And then we're just going to build up from here. Now how high you want to make it is up to you. I think I'll have uh, a small tank here. Now what's our solution for the... Uh, I'm sorry for the sad look of that. That's not the greatest look on the planet. Anyway, but um, what's our solution for the whole situation with the, the heavy fuels being on top and the light fuels being on bottom? Well, I think my solution will be I'm going to have only half a tank here. And I'm going to lock these tanks so that they stay full until the very end. Okay? And then I'm going to have a fuel line feeding in from this tank to the engines. Actually, remember, we, we are around a little tank fuel tank here, so I'm going to feed it into that fuel tank. Alright. And now that... Okay, let's uh, have that separation there. Okay. Now, let's unlock these for now, actually. I want to see the real Delta V here. Okay, so we already have 3,592 there. The problem is this is nowhere near balanced. Okay, so let's, let's see that. Center, no, center mass I want, center of thrust. Okay, it's, it's not horrible, but it is a little bit off. But that's my intention. Again, there's no way we're going to be able to maintain balance. Let me show you what happens as the fuel drains. So these two will be locked. And then uh, this is the one that's closer to this. So this is the one that's going to uh, drain first. Now that's not too bad. That just moves it in here. Then this one will drain. Perhaps. I mean, actually, it's possible we'll unlock these beforehand. But this is the key part as as these drain we're gonna have the boosters off and let's see what happens when this one drains oh dear now that that angle I mean if you take a look at how much that moved even 10 degrees would have trouble dealing with that but there's no way one degree of gimbal is going to handle that kind of move in the center of mass 
Now, turning the engines off and on might help, but not to a significant degree. And worse is when this one finally goes. So let's say all of this. Yeah. I mean, you can see I've, I've tried to have the thrust vector go in through there, but it's not going to be very stable. Uh, we, we could try a little bit harder. We could tilt this engine a little bit more. But uh, that's going pretty extreme. And then when I turn that one off and on, it's going to produce some serious variations. I'd rather have more engines on this side, on the external tank, and sort of have a Buran thing going, than to risk that. And again, I'm just thinking about this the way I would think about this. Uh, if you gave me any craft file with a, with a shuttle-like thing and, you know, told me to slap whatever engines I need needed on the back, uh, I'd go through the same process of thought. So anyway, we've got the... Oh, I don't want that one full. That's sort of important. Uh, you can see what happens. We, we're uh, It'll go really low the the center mass that's definitely too, way too low we could possibly do without so much here it's not gonna help too much though okay so but let's get a cone on this and we also need some struts to get it stable okay so now we need the side boosters and I'm going to basically make them in the same mode I mean we only have 2.5 meter or a 3.75 meter and I think we're gonna need the 3.75 meters not great not great now let's if, uh, I need to add struts but let me deal with thrust first okay and we don't really have as much delta V as I initially thought okay yeah, no no this is locked okay so that 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 was right and then we have the lock tanks there we'll have to check that out later okay now um, so we need about 8,000, right? We need 80%. Uh, this is close enough to 2,000 that I can say that 20% is, is, you know, you can just do the math easily. We need a total of about 10,000 kilonewtons, we'll say. So aiming for 10,000 kilonewtons, we need about 8,000 on this side. But the biggest engines we've got are these. These are the best that we've got. Now we could put a cluster on of, of some other kind. Obviously, there's a 4x cluster already. This gets us to 6,400. We need another 1,600 or so. And I think that I will put on the center one instead of putting them on the sides. Now, you'll notice I didn't go solid rocket boosters because that's futile, right? We need 8,000 kilonewtons on this side. And if we were trying to imitate the shuttle, I mean, what is this going to do, really? We're going to have to cluster them in a weird way they don't have the duration that we need uh, so it's just it's just pointless we're too big for those those SRVs I want to actually asparagus stage in other words I'm gonna fuel flow into this for efficiency maximum efficiency and that might uh, well our balance is gonna be a little bit off but but we'll use the engine on the center stack in order to fix that okay speaking of which let's see now we need a thousand six hundred I think the solution to that is obviously a mainsail but the problem is you know uh, remember we need to be able to manage our thrust there are a few ways of doing that we can as we go up move the thrust limiter slider around that's one way of doing it the other way is to use action groups and turn engines off and on. Now, if we have one big engine, then we're going to be less able to do that. If So, best thing to do here might be an engine cluster, but I'll try the mainsail. I think we're still a bit short, aren't we? Let's see. Oh, we need to move all our engines. All the engines light at the same time, except for the OMS engines. We're a little bit short of what I want, so I'm going to say that I'm going to add, um, let's say, LVT45s on, and I'm going to do that uh, the way I like to do that with the aerodynamic, uh, the tail booms, uh, the tail connectors. 
Let's see. Okay, hopefully it won't get angry at me if I do that. And LVT45s. Okay, that makes me happy. Remember, we wanted at least 80% of the thrust on this side, and now we have a little bit more than that, which is fine. And even better, our thrust to weight ratio is good. I, I was doing that math along the way, so that is not a surprise to me. Okay, so we've got a good thrust to weight ratio. We've got some good engines. It looks okay. And yeah, I think we can get some struts on and then we'll take a look at the finer details of what we need to do. One of the finer details is, of course, how to separate the boosters. Yeah, that's easy enough. I mean, of course, you need separatrons, but you need to make sure that the separatrons do not blast the shuttle. Hmm, fuel feeding from the bottom here. So fuel will be uh, drawing, being drawn from here. wonder if it wouldn't be better to have the fuel flow a little bit higher. Should we do it from the center? Yeah, I think uh, for this, l let's try it from the center. I'll feel a little bit better about that. Okay. Uh, but I'm not too sure. Now you'll notice once we add the boosters, the center of thrust is much nicer. But that's not where the problem lies anyway. The problem is once we separate the boosters, what's going to happen? Okay, so separatrons. Very critical. Those look good. Okay. So those won't hit anything else. And we will keep them in line. Now that would start hurting our shuttle. But if we put them down here, I think that's good. At least it'll clear the wing. I don't think it'll really uh, extend all the way out to the shuttle's body. Did we accidentally... I think we moved it. Yeah, I think we moved it a little bit further to the left. Let's get this here. And that, that's why snapping is important. Now, this is not going to work the first time, I don't think. Uh, and we'll talk about how to adjust things based on what we see. So the first time I'm going to try and launch this, I will be reverting. I guarantee it. Uh, I'm just trying to think of anything else. I think uh, it's time to do the action groups. Now, my mission action groups tend to be on the top. So I'm going to have the, the action groups for the engines on the bottom here. And I'm going to have uh, zero B... Let me have 0 be the mainsail. I'll have 9 be its uh, support engines here. I'll have 8 be these guys. I'll have 7 be the, this one. Those two, sorry. And finally, uh, 6 be that one. And it'll be good to have that... Uh, that listed out for yourself. I'm gonna call this the shuttle stack now. Okay, I think all that's left is the launch clamps. Now remember there is a little bit of a trick to that. You want those low in certain places. I think I'm just gonna have one here. And again, since the tendency of the shuttle is to go in this direction, it's uh, not too bad to attach them like this. One problem is that with my really big wingspan, I can't put these very high. I'm a little bit worried that the wing will clip them. Okay, anyway. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so here we are. It admittedly looks a little bit interesting. And uh, this is going to be a diagnosis phase. Like I said, doubtful that it'll work the first time. And I'll tell you what I diagnose as I go along. Alright, but we're going to light everything. That's not bad, actually. I'm going to pitch up a little bit. Ooh, this, this is not bad. This is not bad at all. Um, you can see I'm full pitch up here. I'd say that the the shuttle's engines are too powerful. 
So that that's that's good. Let's see, roll. We'll take it up as far as I can go. We'll we'll do a refinement later. This is not going badly. He says before disaster strikes. Now, unlike with the real space shuttle, obviously, this uh, uh, in version 1.0 of Kerbal Space Program, you will do the rotation a lot more like the real space shuttle does. But here, we have to go straight up for a while and do our normal stock KSP kind of rotation. Now, as fuel drains from these, remember, the real space shuttle's boosters reduce their thrust. What we have to do is either right click and do thrust limiting or we're going to shut down some engines. One way you can tell when you need to do that is by looking at the pitch indicator when you're not controlling it. So if it starts to go out of bounds then you need to do some thrust limiting or or shut some engines off. Now remember the top tanks are locked uh, here and here. So our delta V is not reading correct right now. Okay, now uh, I've let go of the control stick. The pitch is... well, it's not horrible. It's tending down there. I'm gonna shut off the two LVT-45s. Again, sorry for the look of the shuttle in this case. Obviously, again, I wanted to make a shuttle that wasn't like everybody else's shuttle so that we could try this out properly. Uh, in other words, uh, see, see how to do one from a perspective of not knowing beforehand what it should look like. Okay, I think I need to turn off the mainsail. And got to turn back on the LVT-45s. Got to turn off the LVT forty fives. Okay, booster is off. Gotta let it rotate. I'm gonna separate them. And mainsail. Uh, uh. Fine. Okay, LVT forty fives. <laughs> well, it didn't break apart at least. Okay, I think we've got it. So, what's uh, obviously this is the first time I'm trying to fly this. Uh, what you'll do is you'll create a list of procedures like when you turn on the engine, when you turn off the engines, uh, so that it looks a lot better when you're bringing it up. Uh, you're not going to want it to look like it's flopping all over the place. Okay, now our uh, we're being pushed down a bit. I'll take off the LVT 45s. Also, it doesn't help that I'm trying to explain what I'm doing at the same time, of course. So it's like this now. We are relatively stable, but we need to unlock these now, I think. I'll keep that locked, actually. Let's pump fuel up. No, actually, this is still full. Uh, uh, yeah, let me reconsider. I I'm going to keep those locked. Because I'd rather this drain first. We'll unlock them once we're closer to the top. But now you see it's balanced, right? And this is good. So here I'm <laughs> sort of steering it with the mainsail. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, we're getting close to the end there. Let's unlock these. One other problem we have in KSP is that the tanks are actually heavier than they are in real life. So the empty mass of these tanks is much more than for the space shuttle external tank. Which is actually very thin. Oh, our apoapsis side is going crazy. Of course, one plus side that we have in KSP... I'll go to 200 kilometers. Okay. Um, one plus side that we have in KSP, of course, is that we can shut down and restart the engines. 
uh, so we don't have to worry about that. But um, yeah, I, I guess we'll. I don't know. I'm thinking about whether I should just do uh, OMS burn. Like we did with the shuttle. We're not that far from orbit. Okay, l let me let me have the external tank re-enter. So yeah, uh, unfortunately we'll be losing some engines. So you'll probably eventually want to try and figure out how to make the external tank recoverable. Something uh, NASA of course didn't do. And, and the side boosters. If you want to see an example of that, I made something called the Derrick Shuttle in uh, the Hard Times series. And so the Hard Times series, if you want to check that out, the, the Derrick Shuttle has uh, actually brings all of the stuff on the stack up to orbit. And then they come back down individually. So the two boosters uh, also join it in orbit. And the, the, the external tank is exactly identical to the two boosters. It also tries to get back down on its own. And they all have separate controllers and everything. And then the shuttle continues on its way. So that's an alternative. But all right, let's uh, see if the OMS engines can handle the whole getting into orbit on its own thing so that the shuttle, uh, the external tank can re-enter. Okay, external tank released. And I guess we can use RCS to move away from it. Well, this worked out a lot better than I thought it was going to. Okay, so now the liquid fuel and oxidizer we have there is the stuff that we're actually, that's our payload. And so we're not touching that and also the stuff for ballast in order to bring it back down. Now without a station in orbit, I can't really deliver my payload and therefore I can't really bring this back down to the ground. If I tried to right now, it's way too heavy. It'll definitely not be able to, uh, <laughs> won't be able to keep its nose up honestly. So that's, uh, that's a futile thing. We are, we are not going to try and bring it down. I, it, to some extent, I wish something more had gone wrong with this so that I could tell you how to fix it. Um, so basically, if we were seeing that the, on, on launch, the shuttle was leaning more to the external tank side, then we would have to uh, lower the thrust on these engines. If the stack was moving more towards the shuttle side, we'd have to lower the thrust on on the main engines, the, the booster engines and the one on the external tank. Uh, that is not preferable because of course then our overall thrust to weight ratio is going to go down a lot more and if our overall thrust to weight ratio goes down a lot more we might get to the point where we can't carry the stuff into orbit. Now uh, for this one thing, one refinement I could make is that we clearly actually added a lot more delta V than we needed. Uh, we did not need so much. I put a lot of margin on there and and yeah so we could probably have done with less fuel and less power altogether so we could probably reduce that substantially but anyway don't knock something that works that's for sure oh a little note about the OMS engines we can can't quite see them here but they are also tilted up and that's because they now have to point through the center of mass of this, which is which is around here, right around the middle of the the cargo tank, the fuel tank that we are bringing as cargo. So they do have to be tilted up in order to point through that. If you're going to mount them high, obviously, if you mounted them uh, not as the shuttle has them, but uh, along the center line, you don't have to tilt them up in that case. The issue with tilting them up, though, is that you'll probably need RCS to keep things balanced, uh, especially if uh, this varies a lot uh, through the flight. So if this gets empty, uh, I think I configured the OMS engines, uh, angled them in order to match the empty fuel tank here, which would be the case when it's trying to re-enter. And with a full fuel tank here, I think I need the RCS to keep the thing balanced. Now you can see this, my little OMS engines, the O10s also take a long time to burn for orbit here so they're they're very accurate compared to the space shuttle
I need solar panels on this thing. We are losing electric charge. That's something I forgot. I should have started this earlier. I didn't think it would take quite this long to do this burn. Didn't uh, estimate that properly. So we're not going to get into quite a circular orbit here. Put it in a very high orbit. I think it would have been better to get into something a little bit lower than 200 kilometers, which is pretty darn high around Kerbin. We'd have a lot more delta V left over, though our delta V situation isn't too bad after we drain this tank. And if we were really docking with a station, I don't know, rendezvous with a station with this much delta V is dicey, but but definitely possible. Of course, if we were rendezvousing with a station, we'd we take that into account during launch and we would have gotten into the right apoapsis for a uh, phasing orbit or something like that in order to catch up with the station so it wouldn't take that much delta v to get in uh, get close to the station and dock and then the station would be able to fill us up on the monopropellant now of course if you want to design your shuttle so that the OMS engines use liquid fuel and oxidizer that's fine there's no problem with that whatsoever that is your business. I was just trying to, in terms of the systems, I was trying to match the space shuttle as best I could. Uh, obviously in the layout of the shuttle here, I did not. Okay, we're in orbit. Uh, I don't want to get rid of the rest of my Delta V here. We're not going to be able to bring this back down. I'm probably going to revert at the end of this. Again, because the fuel tank is full and we will we, we would need to dock with something to empty that before bringing this back down. Af uh, even if we didn't refuel with uh, the mob propellants, which we probably should, um, just emptying that tank would give us a whole lot more delta V on the remaining mob propellants. But anyway, that's, that's all a different story. Right now, I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. This is, has been an unexpectedly successful shuttle launch uh, and uh, if you have any other questions about how to put together a space shuttle uh, please let me know and uh, but I think the next time I, I, I there's been a big delay between my previous video and this one hopefully I can back get back to the swing of things and uh, do some more tutorials I haven't really explained launch azimuth yet and there are a few other things that I'd like to explain uh, back in career mode uh, so yep uh, but I hope you enjoyed this and uh, found it uh, informative. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments and suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.